Welcome. What's up, guys? This is David Bravo with the Trainer Feed. Jesus, Dave. Um, with me are my hosts or my co-hosts. My other hosts. My other hosts. <laughs> Angel Sanchez. Yep. Jacques Delajar. <laughs> How are you feeling, team? You feel good? Feel yeah. good. Chilling. You know? Kind of sucks today, you know, in, in the world. Yeah, today is um, not a good day, but... But, other than that, we're all healthy so far. And segue into health and fitness, preventative health care. And that's going to be today's episode about how we could implement a more holistic approach to preventative health care with you know including training uh physical therapy mental health you know maybe uh depending on what insurance we all have but i think in my opinion training is a very important thing when it comes to preventative health care and i think a lot of insurance companies could benefit from that um and giving incentives out to people when it comes to them choosing an insurance provider um because if i remember correctly when I was at the front desk at Equinox, people would come in. When you were born? Sure. <laughs> when I was there, um, I would have some, some of the members come up and ask me for a printout of their visits for their health insurance because they get reimbursed. And I was like, oh, shit, this is pretty cool. And I would ask them, so yeah, what is it? Do they, do they give you your entire, like, thing back? And they're like, no, a couple, couple of bucks. I was like, okay, well, you know, there is a little incentive, I guess, to do it and, you know, get some money back. But I think depending on how much it is that you're charging or how much a lot of gyms are tar- charging and the insurance company is really not giving as much, there is a little incentive. I mean, it's still there, but I think it is a good idea for insurance companies to tell their users, hey, if you train, if you go belong to a gym and you could show us they've used it, I think it will definitely make a difference in terms of you know, the health and wellness of just people in general. Because I think, without making it too complicated, just going to the gym two to three times a week and moving around is better than not doing anything. It's a game changer. It, it has, I think, almost any and every study you can read about improving overall health and wellness, exercise, whatever form it looks like, two to four to five times, whatever, and whatever intense. And there are some studies that suggest it might be better with this intensity or that intensity. But period, it's just exercise. And, and anywhere between 20 minutes and up and you know there's fine lines but just I yeah insane that it's not it's not a thing right now like you mentioned a couple of bucks I have heard some people get their memberships partly covered by their drop if they hit a certain number of visits for example so that's that's an incentive too I mean it just and I've been to physical therapy recently it, it's not that different from training. It's it's very much the same. It's just a person may have come from an injury. It's but we've all worked people with injuries. It's not different from PT in that regards. In theory, by the law, you can't physically manipulate someone's joints or tissue. I think that might be the the definition of what's different between a physical therapist and a personal trainer. Unless there's some trainers. Unless what? Unless there's some trainers. Yeah, who just give you a full. Full on massage. Full on massage. <laughs> Five minute cool down. Let's go. But it's not all about that. Yeah. I I, since COVID, I don't touch anyone. Yeah. That's crazy. I forgot all about that. That used to be a thing. Oh, I'm like. <laughs> they do the, 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 yeah, they do massages towards the end. Well, people use the stick and they have their client just lay on the, on the mat. I don't know about that. And then they're using the stick to like roll their quads for them. Dude, you'll never catch me doing that. Oh, no, how about I'm like, the, uh, I'm like, have them fucking do it themselves. Like, get out of here. Just use a foam roller. This, it was, this is a rabbit hole. Oh, yeah. well, real quick. We're just how scratching about, the surface. Just scratching. Yeah, how so. about those who use a, a massage gun like in someone's neck? When I see that, oh, I'm like, yeah. I oh, can bet this. Get this. I saw someone the other week doing it towards someone's glutes, and I was like, no, this is yeah. not happening. Legit, on the floor, laying down, just drilling that thing along their legs and their butt. And I'm like, Mm, hey yo, pause. I had a member do, uh, <laughs> ask me about that. She was like, "Oh, I heard you have the hyper ice thing." I was like, oh, "Yeah, no. this was back in '76." Uh, she was and she was asking about it. And I was like, "Yeah, I have it." And she was like, "Oh, can you do you mind like massaging me?" Blah blah blah. I was like, I "Do mind?" I'll, <laughs> I was like, I'll, "I'll give it to you, and you can just do it yourself." Um, you don't but, want to be liable. Yeah, because I'm not about to be held responsible for blah blah blah. She's like, "Oh, okay, I get it, I get it." And I turn around, then another trainer's doing it for her. I was like, 
I mean, the most extreme example of why not to do it is the whole thing about blood clots. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. But you're also given the piece of equipment to someone who may not know the human anatomy that well. Right. But that's the thing. Yeah. Give it to them, whatever the fuck they do with right. it. I'm like, cool. But that's, I'm and not. even, it just, and also, we've, without going down this rabbit hole any further, I want to, before we get back out, the, usually, this, no, when someone's feeling pain, the source isn't where you're feeling it. Right? If someone's got something issue in the lower back, it might be through their hip. Well, they're drilling the gun in, in, into their back. You're like, all right, you're not really addressing the issue here, but um, go, let's uh, reel it back in to prevent the health care. Yeah, let me, let me uh, jump in. So we're in healthcare and preventative health. I, I definitely have seen different models in terms of like payment. So some clients will say that um, they go to the gym X amount of times and then they get reimbursed. I've also seen it where they have to front load where they purchase this, the membership and they pay for it out front, and then they get the receipt later on in the year mm-hmm. after hitting a certain number of visits. I've also seen it be waived completely, but less of this is more less of this is coming from the insurance companies, but more of it is coming from the actual companies themselves that these clients or these people work for are covering those bases, which is interesting because I think that obviously since it's preventative health uh, or preventative health care, it should be incentivized by. Uh, the insurance companies as well, but it doesn't seem like that happens all the time. More often than not, in the cases that I've been exposed to, it's more of the companies or the corporations that the clients work for, they'll supplement that. Um, So that's pretty interesting. But that aside, the finances about it aside, I remember Jacques, you showed me that article um, in regards to like the trainer's role in the healthcare industry with like preventative, in, in regards to preventative healthcare and how um, the author was speaking about how trainers aren't seen or aren't seen as equal or you know on the same level of like the doctors or the physical therapists or whatnot and it does become a little bit challenging they're like the butt of the joke right because people think you go with the trainer and then the trainer's not going to know what they're doing and to be fair to like you know those who are you know doctors or physical therapists or you know whatever um, I think that training has gotten a bad rap because of a lot of shitty trainers just becoming trainers like there's no real like concrete way to say you're a trainer or not a trainer you could just be a guy pull up at a gym and then they'll give you the job as with the title of personal trainer and they'll ask for the certifications and everything else later which i think sometimes they can hire you when you're getting your certification as well which is not always a bad thing but i think being the you don't need education exactly like and you know i know you guys you know and i trust you guys with like clients and stuff like that you're pretty smart guys i don't think that uh, you'll take my clients and run them through a wall. It doesn't take the oh, yeah, anyway. necessarily to say that this you're is You're stronger than your excuses. But at least, at least the certification, and then the certifications, they do need to, um, I think, step them up a little bit because at the same time, like, you have a lot of people uh, where you can take, like, an online certification and then all, that's it, and you're, boom, you're a personal trainer. And it's kind of like, I don't know. I think we need to do a couple of things on that front to be taken a little bit more serious. But at the same time, you can have like doctors or physiotherapists or whoever who, you know, they're just not great people and they'll take advantage of people as well. So, I mean, one of my, one of the surgeons I saw like my knee, knee up and I just never referred him to anyone else. So I know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> I know where you live now. <laughs> but anyway, point being is that there's, there's good, I think, as you said, Angel, there is unfortunately some trainers that give, and this, I think, the case for a lot of professions you get a couple of bad examples that give the whole industry a bad rep and you know if you think about the likes of instagram it's the trainers that look better and do what looks like more fun that gets either more following more traction or leads you to believe they're a better trainer and we spoke about this with brendan when he talked about content he said oh the content that's either fulfilling or most informative doesn't do well because you know, doing a plank or doing a glute bridge or a payoff press doesn't look sexy, you know, unless someone's like jumping up and then smashing a ball into a wall or jumping over the wall, whatever it is, or running through the wall, as you said, that looks better and that looks more functional. I always look at these people um, and I just think, okay, great, they have the social media down, whatever. And it's, but going back to the trainers as well, I was speaking to someone, I think I was speaking to some members the other day about this, about they came out with trainers or this and that. And I got a crazy story too. I'll tell you in a second as well. I was surprised by this, but um, on the topic, but you know, someone spoke about with trainers and 
the newer trainers feel they have to spice things up because they want to look like they're more important. Whereas I spoke, I can't remember who I was telling this the other day about, but I was just saying, you'll know a more senior trainer when the pattern, the program is very simple and there are little modifications here and there that don't seem too obvious. That it, there's very rarely jumping. It's not that jumping isn't useful, but there's just so many of the patterns that hit all the same muscles in a safer, more controlled manner. You know, I think that's just something that's part of it. But let me... Did you want to jump in? Yeah, I want to say, um, I think part of that also is the fact like sometimes companies hire more people than they actually need. Yeah. And then you're a trainer that gets, you know, hired, newly hired, and you don't have any clients and you're trying to figure out why you don't have clients. And I remember, you know, when I first started um, training, I was like a slower person to acquire more clients. And it was challenging for me to get that first client. And I remember thinking... Like, is this a career path I want to take? Do I have to, like, start getting people to, like, do something crazy? Like, what is it that separates me from other people in terms of my training? Because I knew, I knew how to train people. I knew the physiology and the anatomy and whatnot. But it just wasn't clicking on the business side. And eventually it did. And eventually things, like, moved from one end to the other. But I think that when you... And I train celebrities. Uh, sure. I think I do. I don't know. Yeah. I mean... I mean so, so his cousin, right? Oh, yeah, I didn't hear that. Oh, yeah, it did. It was my headphones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, So, anyway, um, I say that to say, like, companies need to also think about it. Uh, think about who they're hiring, why they're hiring them. And if you can't guarantee somebody or give somebody, like, a client straight out the gate and see what they do with it, it's kind of like you're just having somebody, like, clean up or just be, like, on standby. And that's very discouraging. Like, at least give somebody one person to work with so that they can continue to grow. I think that, obviously, you need to get them to do other things aside from that. But, you know, people burn their careers just because they feel like, they're just not wanted or in a place that just doesn't have enough business. I think to sum it all up, it just has to do with the business model of a lot of commercial gyms. And this yeah, is, you only get paid if yeah, you, you get paid if sessions. You, if yeah. you get paid based on the volume you get, and you get paid whether or not. And if you're not there, you don't get paid. You know, mm-hmm. and it's like you know, it's all about volume. A lot of you know, people. Could, I personally think places could say we're about quality of training and things like that. But then when you have a trainer that's doing eleven sessions, you know, every day because he is in a way forced to because if not he can't pay his rent right mm. it's like all right whatever too much dog like i mean people will say what they want you know people will just make money you know you give somebody an opportunity to make as much money as possible and some people will just drive it home and that's not saying it's right or wrong but at the same time like, the quality it, has to yeah, the quality. Like, nobody's going to be you know standing up making you know flipping burgers at mcdonald's and making the best burger ever that's a terrible analogy but you know no, but it's about principle that they, they just don't about the quantity yeah like, that's one side of it but you're not going to get the quality at the other end like uh-huh. shit, you know things are going to slip through the cracks but to your point david uh one of my clients put me on to uh a gym and I had mentioned it before but I forgot the name but now I remember the name so a gym that he used to work out of in Hong Kong called Joint Dynamics and that place has a different model where they they have a staff and the staff is like you know personal trainers or physiotherapists and doctors and what have you and they take you from station to station and as the client you are um you're not necessarily anybody's client, not one person's client. Like there are trainers that do uh, better with like triathlons or there are trainers that do better with um, strength training or trainers that do better with sports specific stuff. And they will refer you to, you know, individuals based on what your needs are. So your needs are met straight out the gate. And then also the trainers are on salary as well. So like, it doesn't really matter how many sessions the trainer does. So it takes away that pressure to like, oh, I can't pass this person along to this to so and so because you know if I do that then I'm going to be out whatever. Or what if this person steals my clients, which we've seen before, which we've seen happen before, you know? Um, and then that trust is gone, you know. To no fault of their own. Listen, man, I've we've all been there, dude. It happened to me one time. I got the email from this guy saying he wanted to work with me at the holiday party. Oh man, I was tipsy and I saw the email. I'm like. Oh, nah. Put it in my pocket. And, yeah, we worked together for a while after that. But I, but you don't, you don't try to take you're it wrong, away. You're wrong someone. for that, David. You're no, wrong but that. you don't try to take it away from so someone. You just, you is know. Is it because you subbed them for a, for I like a subbed week for too. a little bit. And for, I subbed that's for just a week. Did dirty. And that's all the client needed. <laughs> what can I say? That's the way out. <laughs> what can I say? You know, it's just, you know, I am. I had, a, I had a client. So I was subbing for a another trainer. And then we'll kind of, like, 
get back on track and then kind of wrap it up. I, I think I want to have one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. I'll say one more thing to wrap it up. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I had a client. I was subbing for a trainer, and then I had a that client was like, "Oh, can you can you train me?" You know, after this, and I was like, "Nah," because you know this guy's coming back. Blah blah blah. And she was like, "No, but this is honestly some of the best training. I'm pain free. I'm blah 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 blah." And I told her I was like, honestly, like that's not how I want to carry on my career. And I think that if I start doing that, then I'm going to be it's gonna be reflected in how people look at me and how people like treat me and respond to me. So I said, How about this? How about I share what I have done with you with the other trainer and I speak to them about how we've had some success here and you're interested in doing X, Y, and Z. And hopefully that suggestion can move that trainer in that direction. If not, then I would say you should speak to the manager about whatever and then go from there. But I think speaking to them directly and then me also touching base with them and saying like, hey, listen, this is what this this person responded to. Um, I think that that helped. And then the person felt a little bit more secure. They were like, okay. You know, they ended up not training with anybody after that. But, you know, I think that it was worth not stealing the client. Yeah, you don't want that reputation. Listen, I, don't, I don't think it's stealing a client if you're, if you're going in there not with that intention. See, if you're not going with the intention, but I just think – I can't remember who said this to me, but when someone – because it's funny because I know right now there's a client that's talking to someone close to me about leaving me. And the, the client probably doesn't realize how transparent I am with my friends. So I think it's no. hilarious. Yeah, it's coming, and I can feel it, and I think it's hilarious. Yeah, it's funny. But anyway, it, it's if you have yeah, – no, no, no mentioning names. Um, if you have that person you sub for – You already mentioned it? <laughs> no. Oh, he's, <laughs> I no, I didn't. got the video. No. <laughs> read lips. Um, <laughs> but it just – I think someone told me they said if you want to train like David, hey, I want to train. I normally see Angel twice a week, but now I want to train with you. If you're the trainer, I would have thought someone would say something saying along the lines of, "All right, I'll train with you, but you still have to see Angel twice a week. Like I'll train you, yeah. but you you owe Angel those two sessions or like that's I your do that trainer. With somebody currently, we right. share somebody because at the end of the day, they were like, you know, either I had more time open or they just enjoyed work with me. It's like, sure, but. Also, you're going to work with this other person and you're going to have to let them know what you want mm. and we'll have a discussion. Like, I, I wouldn't come out of nowhere and be like, not even tell Angel if one of his clients wants to train with me and then just take him and, like, just do it. It's like, I'll be like, hey, Angel, this is what's going on. Yeah. Like, yeah, what do you want to do? I think to, to, like, cover also the client's ass a little bit, too, like, sometimes you don't know what you necessarily want um, and what you don't want in a trainer and you figure that out after you start working with somebody. And I think it's important that, you know, we treat each other as adults and we say, all right, look, like if this is something that, you know, this is something that I didn't know that I wanted. But after working with so-and-so, I really appreciated this, that, and the third. Like, you never have an iPad with my program. And this person had an iPad with my program. And I thought that that was very professional. And I like to see that in my trainer. So going forward, if you could share with me like either the program, either digitally or like have it present, that would help me feel more comfortable with the, with the way that this, the direction of which this training program is going forward, right? Like that could be another thing. And you don't know that until you work with somebody else and then you're aware of it and then boom. But um, go ahead. Let, yeah, so let me just, I'm not, I'm not gonna mention names now. I love doing this stuff. So anyway, I speak to this uh, co-worker the other day and they're a group fitness instructor and I know they were looking for coverage the previous three weeks because they had that leg and they're still limping this person like three weeks later oh what happened this co-worker of mine got stretched by a trainer and the trainer stretched the hip too far and it and I was like are you serious that that made me because as a group fitness instructor you don't walk you don't get paid right same as health fitness uh, personal trainers I'm thinking that's cr- that's and in my head, I don't know who I was talking to about this. So I said, that's why I only typically trust orthopedic surgeons, physical therapists, maybe chiropractors, depending on who it is. I don't trust anyone else to stretch me. Like, you don't... Did, I was almost mad for the trust person. Alex does then, right? Uh, yeah, but even when Alex does... Alex stretches me or pushes something, and I'm like, that doesn't feel good. There's, there's, there's the pain or the discomfort where you know it's good for you, such as the IT band. You know, or in your scap, then there's pain where you go. No, nah, I don't think anything's going to benefit from this. But anyway, that was all I was going to say. Oda, R- we'll wrap it up. Yeah, no. Nah, um, and then lastly, to just you know uh, go back to preventative healthcare and the system. 
I think that what the dialogue that we just had about stealing clients, quote unquote, and like taking clients and whatever, I think it's part of it is fed by the way that the system is set up here, where you get paid per session that you do, versus like if you're on a salary, there's not really that sort of, uh, you know, um, it's not like a Shark Tank, right? Like you're not just trying to like grab a client or like grab a session here, grab a session there, and take as many sessions as you can. Right, it's not um, so because it's not incentivized that way. It's almost like it takes the fear of losing a client out of it, and you focus on something else. You focus on the reason why you're there, which is to help the client. And you know, obviously, everybody likes to work. Everybody likes to train people, and everybody wants to, um, you know, make people feel better and move better. But uh, if it's not incentivized in that way, then it can turn into something different. And I think that, you know, obviously the healthcare industry needs to realize that. And we spend a lot more time, generally speaking, with clients than their doctors or, you know, the other people that they have in their circle. So it should be taken care of and it should be respected. Also, like, you know, I've spoken to some doctors and some doctors have been pretty shitty to me. So I feel like they should also just recognize that, you know, it's not it's not nice to do that and it's not good in the long run because we're going to spend more time with the patient or the client than they are right and at the end of the day like we build those relationships you know two to three times a week for at least an hour and they might see them like once a month or something like that for 20 30 minutes if that yeah right so if that right exactly probably less um so not to say like one is better than the other but we should all treat each other with respect and if I'm saying that I'm her personal trainer and I've been working with her for a couple of years, like respect that and then speak to me as such, not just like, you know, I don't have time for you or whatever. You know what I was going to say as well? I just remember like that. Deadlifts are bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make sure you definitely do a on why you came to that conclusion. Yeah. yeah. Or I don't, if I'm on a treadmill, don't make me walk uphill to walk my quads. But when I heard that shit, I said, who taught you this? Yeah. It's like, are, how do you get from point A to point B? Do you walk? You can't walk uphill. You have to get roll. You have to get to like. Flat, you have to get it over. Exactly. How much shit I've heard. Anyway, there was a another thing I was going to say as well. In some of the classes recently, I've been teaching where um, I see someone modifying, and I always give someone the opportunity to begin to modify or come to me if you have an injury, because then I can walk through. Okay, that you can't do a bed press, so let's do a halo instead, or what, or curl, clean, whatever it is. And I've been finding a lot recently where maybe it's because I'm not approachable in the beginning, but. No one's been coming to me or not consistently. And then halfway through, I see someone modify. And I was like, all right, get a little deep. And like, oh, I can't. I had a hernia. Or I can't. I had frozen shoulder. And I'm not sad at these people. I want people to tell me. But I just wish I'd known before. Because then my approach to going over them and correcting them is different. Because I know you have a modification needed because you're injured. But the amount of people that I, after I talked them off mic, I said, oh, like, what happened to your knee? What happened to your hip? And you'd be surprised the amount of people that go, oh, I've just been going to PT for a year or two and it's not getting better. I'm like, what? And I always shout out to my guy, Dr. Roddy Williams. He's the man. Uh, I, I almost every single time, actually, I do send every single time them to his direction, in his direction. Because if you don't need surgery, he will tell you. But he's just, he's the guy. And I don't, I also believe when talking about diagnosing injuries, I talk to anyone about this that time frame if it's one to two weeks you still have injury we're gonna get checked out don't just push through it get, a, get an x-ray I, I know sometimes insurance doesn't cover the MRIs and x-rays but if you have the ability to get it covered or it'd be a very affordable copay definitely go and do it because you need to know what's going on inside the amount of people I've said that told me I can think so of two important. you, you, you just can only make do you not like want inferences right like do you, you want to know what's going on or you should keep guessing exactly that's what I don't get like no I think when I had when I had just before the once I had the first knee surgery I, I became obsessive about an injury knowing what it is so when my hip was bothering me two weeks in I was like fuck it I'm booking the appointment and even though my guy's not a hip guy he knew we did an x-ray that day I'm still waiting to pull back actually that's not his fault but the team and I'm I was I was I was like wow I don't know what this is I've never had this maybe it's you know you wake up funny and it goes away after a week but when it's there two weeks you go okay something's not right two weeks is a long time it's a long time and every single day if you have to modify your movement that's not a way to live you know i, I get that we're not all symmetrically put together the same so i know we we will move a little bit differently but if you have to alter the way you move for something because of an injury i think just go get it checked out again i mentioned his name dr Riley williams i think he's the guy 
And Angel, I know you met him when you picked him up after one of my surgeries, but it's... Yeah, Jacques was high off the Oreos. Yeah, high <laughs> off the Oreos and the... Um, Oreos, man. And like the painkillers, but nah. But anyway, I guess we All can right. wrap it up. Let's wrap yeah. it up. Wait. We're only scratching the surface. Wait, wait, wait. Scratch the surface uh, in two <laughs> seconds. So I did want to I did wanna say something that uh, it kind of like goes to Jacques' point and then it also goes to the point that I just brought up. It's like I was actually thinking about this when I was talking to one of my clients who had you know a whole bunch of different doctors, different specialists in her life, and we were trying to figure out like a root cause of something. And um, I realized that I was thinking in my head, I was like, damn, you really need like somebody to just take a look at everything and see what's going on. Like your gastro might actually help, you know, uh, you know, talk, talk to your physical therapist of why like your hips always hurt or like in a specific part, because now we're we're seeing some correlation between, you know, certain gastrointestinal uh, either you know, diseases or just like, you know things that pop up and then other things that happen in the body similarly like you know neurology and see how that interferes with other things in the body um you know i I was thinking like damn we need somebody like a point person to be like hey let me take a look at everything see what all your doctors have said give me all the mris give me all the x-rays give me all the training all whatever and then just kind of like put the pieces together kind of like an investigator and i thought about it i was like damn like speaking to the point that i said like we spend the most time with these clients these patients it's like i think it's probably us like i know like we're not going to be able to read mris but at least we can try to like paint a broader picture and then also uh let guide the client to those um other people like you know your doctor um or physical therapist or whatever to make them better and make them work better feel better um, and improve their quality of life because sometimes those clients don't put it together, um, and rightfully so. Like it's not their specialty; they're seeing you because they don't know exactly what to do. Uh, but yeah, so healthcare industry, kind of in the U.S. at least, needs to change up a little bit. I think. I think we should definitely get some sort of salary, some sort of base pay. Um, probably won't happen unless there's like a union situation going on. Um, but it's unfortunate that it would uh, take that in order to move things in the right direction. Because there's a lot of people in pain. Obviously, we got an opioid epidemic, and that's not you know, because of nothing, right? It's there because people are in pain and people need help. Anywho, we're just scratching the surface here on the trainer feet. These savages. Shout out to your doctor, Mr. Yeah, my, Dr. Riley Williams of the HSS. He is the, he is the USA men's basketball, the Nets basketball doctor, and the New York Red Bulls. This guy is legit, yeah. And then shout out to uh, Dr. Clifford Yoon. DPT. Yeah, that's our good old friend, physical uh, therapy. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He was uh, on one of our first episodes, um, and he's a physical therapist that I worked with um, when I first started training, and uh, he knows a lot, and he's based out of Philly right now, so hit him up as well. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Peace. Bye. See you in the next one. Peace.